we've, we've got to break this idea that when you're old, you're useless. Right. And, and I mean, it sounds rough to say that. This is what a lot of people really have. And we have this picture in our head. In fact, you probably have this picture right now. And it's, it's that there's tubes, there's monitors, there's wheelchairs, and you don't know your name. And you spend the last 20 years of your life in slow decline, suffering, and spending all of your money, and then basically dying in a hospital. That's actually not what has happened throughout all of history <laughs> until very recently. What used to happen was the village elder. Mm -hmm. like you become old and wise and venerated, and you share your life's experience with the younger generation, who, at least those of them who are smart enough to listen, because it saves them all of the suffering. Like human progress happens because we pass things on from the last right. generation to the new generation. So I spend as much time as I can interviewing people in their 80s and 90s. You know, oh, you want a Nobel Prize? You're still running a lab at 94? I think I want to pick your brain. Right. It, it, that was Eric Kandel, the guy who discovered neuroplasticity. And it, so to be able to do stuff like that, you got to first not die. And there's four things, and this is like the thesis of my next book, four things are going to kill you. They'll keep you from becoming an anti-aging guru. And one of them is Alzheimer's disease. You look at the odds, your chances of getting Alzheimer's are probably approaching 50%, depending on your gender. Women get it more than men. Uh, that's I've been doing a lot of work with the Maria Shriver's Women's Alzheimer's Project, because this is a gender-specific disease. Men get it, and people get more attention on men, but women get it more than men. And if Alzheimer's doesn't get you, what's gonna get you? Cardiovascular disease. And if that doesn't get you, cancer. And the thing that underlies all three of those conditions that is rampant is diabetes, type two diabetes. Right. So the first thing you do to live a long time is don't die from one of the big four killers. So you have the four killers, cancer, diabetes, Alzheimer's, and cardiovascular disease, yes. right? And I'm guessing that the number one way to, to start avoiding these things is the food that you eat. It is the food that you eat. And uh, The Bulletproof Diet is a book I wrote in 2014 that mm -hmm. really brought ketosis back into the mainstream. And the very trick that didn't work in the 70s for ketosis is that it matters what kind of fat you have. It matters what kind of protein you have. Right. So here's something you can do. Google Bulletproof Roadmap. And this is the whole diet on one page infographic. You can print it out and put it on your fridge. It doesn't cost anything. And it just tells you this protein is less inflammatory than this protein. This fat is a good fat. This fat's a bad fat. And the trick here that will change your performance right now and how long you're going to live is that there's a big list of suspect foods in the middle. And this is going to sound shocking. The foods that work for you may not work for your spouse or your best friend. And it's okay. There is no, this food is a good food. And when you identify the guilty suspects in your food supply, guilty for you, it stops chronic inflammation. And chronic inflammation is a precursor to every one of the four killers. And it also is a precursor to diabetes.